Right, welcome to this Warhammer Worlds tutorial. Uh, I've got a like a ultramarines jungle base uh, here, and in this episode, as per usual, I'll show you step by step how you can achieve uh, the same results. There's a number of uh, tutorials involved here as we pull this one together, but I've taken a set that's been painted up for another battle map, uh, and then I've taken the risk because it's a different color scheme. It brought it across into the jungle atmosphere, and I think it's uh, looking pretty good here. On the board so step by step i'll show you how it's done in this video so i'll be showing you the basics and then all the little other details that I add in just to try and add narrative and theme to our table just to make them interesting to look at uh, and a great environment to fight across in a few games of warhammer 40,000. So the starting point here is the battle mats this will give you a foundation uh, for, for putting your terrain on top and also your, your sort of color reference and color scheme uh, as well this one is called battleground version 2 uh, from gamemat.eu. This one came as 6x4. Uh, I got a hold of this one before they changed uh, the battle mat sizes. So I've just marked it off with a bit of jungle and some pipes across there. That's the boundary just measuring 12 inches in. They do do this mat in the updated size, so 44 inches by 60. Uh, so that size is available, uh, but a variety of sizes uh, for many of their mats. There's all different uh, options to go for. And then uh, across their range, gamemat.eu also do double-sided battle mats. You actually get two mat designs in the one, so it's a really, really good value. Just flip it over and you've got two completely different designs uh, available. So this is this mouse mat material. It rolls out really nice and flat, which is brilliant. Uh, figure friendly, nice and soft for models on the board. Uh, and then nice and quiet when you're rolling the dice as well. So it's a brilliant surface. You can roll it up, comes with a carry bag, so you can transport it around uh, to your friend's house or to a uh, local games club. Uh, so they're easy to carry about, nice and durable, uh, so they are a good job. And it gives you that foundation, and then we just build up from there. So I'll put links uh, for as much as I can in the video description below. Uh, there is a link for gamemat.eu there. I've also got a discount code from them. It's 11% off, so you can use that at the checkout as well, just to get a discount uh, for your items from them. So foundations down. Then your main structural parts uh, for this setup, sort of being the central part of the game, we've got sort of the jungle around the fringe. So you can imagine it's just jungle stretching off in different directions. This outpost has been cleared uh, and set up across here. So most of the terrain here is the industrial terrain set from gamemat.eu. Uh, so in that set, it's one of their larger sets. Uh, you get four of these large containers. There's one there, there's one up there. One just tucked underneath there, uh, and then there's another fourth one just further through there as well. You also get this large structure across here. You get four of those, one, two, three, I actually put it on top here, and then a fourth one across there. Uh, and then the containers, these boxes, those and those, and then you also get uh, two sets of these stacked up pipes as well. So re that really bulks out the terrain quite nicely. Uh, great for line of sight blocking terrain, for infantry hiding behind, jumping on top of and so on. So these uh, structures are a really good big fan of the industrial terrain set from gamemat.eu. So that set comes pre-painted and pre-made. It's just, just take out the box and, and use it. Uh, but I've painted this up, adjusted the color scheme to match in with one of the other battle maps from gamemat.eu. Uh, I'll put that tutorial, you should see a link for that in the video description as well. Uh, and that will show you how to paint up to the standard that you see here. So all the chipping and weathering effect. I cover how to do the posters as well. Uh, in that video, you can see some more across here as well. It's just really matching this up to link in with one of the other battle mats. And then what I've done in this video is I've brought it across for this setup and see how well it would fit in with the jungle kind of setup. So and it seems to have worked very well. You've got a color scheme going on here uh, for this Imperial compound, but I sort of blended it in with jungle. Uh, it seems to have worked quite well. I was quite happy with the setup uh, on this board. Uh, and that's good. If you can get a terrain, terrain that you've painted up to match in with a variety of different landscapes, then you're really onto a winner. You can use it across multiple different battlefields and really get good value uh, out of your terrain work that you've done. So the original color scheme, it comes sort of pre-painted in this kind of color scheme across here. So it's nice for, for putting other colors on top. Uh, and that's sort of the original color that it comes with. Other terrain is, uh, there's a portal structure. This is an individual piece from gamemat.eu. Uh, so that's available from them. And again, I painted it up in the same style as this. 
uh, to match up. Then there is some Edmec trains, not too much, a little bit. The structure across here, sort of D shape, uh, and it's hollow in the middle. I'll lift that. I'll just put this train piece across the middle just to make something different. I always like having like a second level to my game. As you can see, there's a whole second level running through uh, here on this battlefield just to create sort of two levels, two areas to fight across. Uh, this is another smaller piece, very useful little piece across here, which is stretched out across. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for Admech Train. There's some Games Workshop piping as well. So on top of that, so that's given me a couple of bits of Admech Train and Industrial Terrain set, plus the portal across there. And I've filled up the table really well with terrain. There's just plenty of uh, line of sight blocking terrain here. And the table's broken up quite nicely. So... I'll maybe talk about a few accessories. We'll come to the jungle in just a moment. Uh, so this is from Games Workshop here, this uh, statue, Space Marine. You often see them in our games. I'm a big fan of this. Uh, so I've placed it on top there just to really give it that uh, Warhammer 40,000 Imperial kind of feel to it. Uh, there's some uh, Games Workshop boxes and barrels just to really make turn it into a 40K landscape. Then featured on here as well, a handmade walkways like so. That's made using a material called Plastruct for the rods. And then the aluminium mesh that you can get off eBay. Uh, it's a car body repair kit. So it's used to fill in like rusty gaps on cars and you sort of put paste and, and shape it over the top. Uh, but it's a brilliant material for making uh, like chain link fences and so on. So those are handcrafted, but I mean, they're so, so useful. You can use them to span the gaps between terrain uh, just to create uh, extra levels and, and connect pieces of terrain together. So I've put two here next to each other and it's created a full-on uh, walkway all the way across here. So very, very useful indeed. Uh, I've done a tutorial showing you how to make uh, these and the chain link fences which are just around the other side of the board. So the chain link tutorial, I'll show you how to make one of these sections. Same process as the tutorial is actually for one of these and then I, I talk about uh, how you can do that for the walkways and the posters as well. Uh, but that's just handcrafted again using the plast strike material and the car body repair kit. And this is the barbed wire set you can get from Games Workshop. Not sure if they still do it, but there's other companies that make it. Just this um, imitation barbed wire just to add a real good security fence kind of finish. Quite straightforward just to make, just make them in a batch. And you can create chain link fences for your games very industrial kind of feel to it. The same process to make the walkways, which you've seen already, and also the same material being used to make these uh, posters. Like so, a massive fan, I think these look really, really good. And you can see the same material being used. And these posters here are just printed out on normal paper. I spray them with Munitorum Vice just to soak the pigment in, protect them a little bit, and then just stick them on, and then add a bit of weathering effect as well, just to Make them look nice and industrial and grimy. They really make it, they really help the table become a 40k themed board. You can see there's one across here for the Maldi 9 guard as well. And they're movable, you can put them wherever you want around the boards, so they can go wherever you wish. They just go on these feet across here. I've put mine spanning across the terrain over there. So I'll link that tutorial, it's a separate tutorial, uh, and you can just show you can use the same process and you can create all these different things some brilliant accessories and whatever table train setup i've got it's jungle desert city whatever these accessories can be used across the whole range and so they are versatile very useful to have so little touches like that um you can see that more more little pieces like this just adds narrative love adding narrative to my games you just let your imagination run right I'm trying to create a world where your army is going to fight across uh, so uh, a big fan of doing that so there's other little bits to cover. We'll come to the jungle now. So these jungle pieces uh, are actually all placed as one block. And they're mounted on, if you can see it there, it's decorative cork. Now you can get a hold of this stuff from like aquatic centers as reptile and spider enthusiasts use them. Uh, for scatter inside their tanks and so on. So you can uh, get a hold of that, just natural cork bark. Uh, you can buy it in pieces. I've, I managed to track some down on eBay. If there's aquatic centers or pet shops, they will have 
uh, these, but it's a soft material. With all the finish done, you can see it in here. This is very natural rock looking finish. I haven't had to do anything to this. That is the natural look of it, which is fantastic. And then the foliage, the plants on top, I've collected from all over the place. Uh, they really are just fake plants. So I'll pull one out. This one I got like from a, a like a pound shop, a cheap hardware shop, and they had fake plants. And I break the fake plant up. Often they come with these natural plants a bits there, and this really is just a, a match stick. <laughs> and then take a, a drill, make a hole, and then just plant the plant in there like so. And I've got a variety here. There's different pieces. These I got when I was away in Australia. Found those in a, a cheap shop. These from uh, the UK came from a, like a, a pound shop. Again, aquatic centres will do a lot of fake plants as well. eBay is a good place to get a hold of them. I often try and buy them when I see them. Uh, sometimes you see a picture on eBay and you think it's really good and it comes through and it's not what you're expecting. So it's better to actually physically see the stuff. Uh, you get a hold of it again. So you can see this kind of stuff here has come from an aquatic centre. Uh, just there. So a variety of different bits and I've split them up. So you've got a variety of foliage. Uh, running all across the board here. These are really, really good, these little ferns. Again, just mounted on individual matchsticks and just planted into the terrain so you can mix and match and change them around. But there is no painting involved. We've got a brilliant glossy foliage finish. No painting involved at all. No basing work to do. It's really just putting it together and then it's finished. So these are nice and straightforward to do. Uh, really happy with the effect uh, of these on the board. I'll put a tutorial I think there is a tutorial here, I'll track it down, but it shows you the, from start to finish how to achieve that. But jungle pieces of terrain here, and you just move them and place them like blocks on the board. Nice height to them, so infantry can move through. You can use them as line of sight blocking terrain because of their height, obscuring terrain if you so wish. Uh, but uh, I found this to be really good, and it really sets the nice jungle theme uh, here for this board. So the jungle I want sort of coming from the edges, but flowing in amongst the base. Just to get this terrain blended in with the board to make it look like this terrain belongs here on the table. So, you can take jungle pieces and start filtering them in, like they've started growing through uh, the terrain set up. So if I pull out this piece here, this is a, a fake plant. It actually came as a like a, a hanging basket, like a ball, uh, which you can hang up on display. I, uh, it's, I then broke it open. You see the structure over there and just cut it up. And you can see a slight curvature on it, but it's not really noticeable once you put it down. And I just use them as clusters and plant them on the board. Again, there's no work involved, there's no painting, they're nice and durable, there's not, no paint's gonna flick off. Uh, so there's, uh, just, they last forever, these things. So I just started to place them in amongst the terrain like so, just to really plant the terrain on the board like it belongs here and the plants are starting to grow uh, in amongst the board. So there's the detail of it, really starting to create a nice environment here. Perhaps the space has been abandoned for a decade and the plants are starting to grow through. So again, you add a nice bit of narrative and theme. Then you've got these bits here. So I've mounted these on coins, super glue matchsticks to the base. Uh, and this is the old jungle terrain set from Games Workshop, actually. Uh, but again, you can get a hold of these pieces from your uh, aquatic centers and so on and mount those up on individual bits. They're very useful when you can do it like that because then they can be placed uh, as opposed to these larger chunks across here. These individual pieces can be used uh, just to merge into the terrain and just create some nice little planted areas here and add something a little bit different to that. So a little bit of height, a little bit of difference and just to add in uh, more realism uh, to the boards. Highly recommend you do that as well. And these little scatter bits are just pushed in amongst uh, the terrain pieces here. Then the final blend is Lichen. Again, you can look for that on eBay. The aquatic centers may have some, but uh, model shops, model railway shops will have it. Uh, and sometimes you can get a pretty big bag for not too, not too expensive, but this stuff's brilliant. Again, it's just colored that way, so you just take it and use it straight out of the bag. And then finally, stones and scatter. So these are stones that I got on a beach. Uh, they didn't come this color, more of a pastel kind of pink kind of color, the natural form. So I, I took Add some desert colors, it was desert yellow, add, and then 
add a bone. I'll, I'll tell you the colours here so you know what colours to spray out. Yeah, so the colours that I used were uh, Desert Yellow and Skeleton Bone from Army Painter Spray Paints. Just take the stones, put them in a tray, spray them with one colour, add when, they, when it dries, shake them up, spray them again, and just apply those two colors just to get this uh, kind of, it's really these stones I've been using for the desert, but if you look at the colors here on this batter mat, they're blending quite well. And you can use those just to, to blend everything in. So just here at the edge of the foliage, running around to blend the, the jungle piece in. Again, the, the colors match up quite nicely between the stones, uh, the rock face here, and the batter mat. It's just to try to blend a bit of lichen, just blends the whole thing. It doesn't look like you just place the train on the ball, but it's you're planting it there making it part uh, of the table. So again, highly recommend you do that. People have been asking how long does it take to set this up? I'd say about 20 minutes to put this board together and it'll take about 20 minutes to put it away again. So I think it's worth the effort. We'll leave it up for a couple of games. You always feel sad when you create a nice bit of terrain, you have to back it up. Uh, but perhaps these videos are a bit of a, a record of the, <laughs> the different boards that we uh, set up here. But those little finishing touches and in amongst those stones, adding little accessories, Little spare bits of kit. There's a rusty old door from a rhino. There's a crew hunting rifle. Just a little bit. It's creating storyline uh, here on your board for not too much effort. And just really adding to the theme. It's great to have nice painted armies, but when they can fight across nice terrain, uh, you really can immerse yourself in your games of 40k. There's other accessories about as well as accessories from the Space Hulk game. You see the Space Marine Terminator. And there's Frank the Imperial Fist, just a, a lone model on the board as well. But all with the emphasis of creating narrative. Uh, and theme for our games. That's pretty much everything here. If you check out the video description, I'll link as much as I can for you. You're welcome to copy uh, any and all of these stages, but if you want the result you see here, it is doable. You just copy each of the steps, check out the tutorials, by all means change the colors around, but there's no reason why you can't achieve the same kind of battlefield uh, that you see before you here. So we'll close this video out with some panning shots and some music just to give you the vibe of this table, this Ultramarines outpost somewhere in some far-flung planet system somewhere uh, it's abandoned or not but a, a great battlefield uh, to fight across a few games of warhammer 40,000. thanks for watching tune in next time